Hi, I'm Norm Kern and I'd like to welcome you to Access MC, Access to Motorcycling. We're coming to you from the American Motorcyclist Association Heritage Museum in Westerville, Ohio. This unique museum was built to document and preserve motorcycling's proud history. This time we're taking you to Springfield, Ohio for the annual spring pro half mile dirt track race. Bob Moore is here to describe the action on a very windy day. Thank you, Norm. Here we are at the Springfield, Ohio Fairgrounds. It's a beautiful Sunday afternoon. The wind's pretty hard, but the track is in excellent shape. It had a rough winter and a lot of spring rains, and they were still working on it Sunday morning, but the track all in all turned out to be a pretty decent track. The pit area was jam-packed full of machines from all over the United States. The entry list was very, very good, and it made for a terrific program. As you can see, the pits are full. And here we have a junior machine. This is 96A. This is Ken Yoder. This is one of the road taxes. They've evidently done a little work on a timing chain. That's a pretty serious operation to be doing the day before or during the race, but uh, he must have done his job well. This is 11P. This is Larry Davis's road tax. As you can see, they're doing a little butchering on the rear tire. A close-up here will show you that they're increasing the sharp edges for better traction. The more of those little notches you put in a tire, the better the tire will bite. It takes a real good craftsman to do that type of work. Here we see a guy putting on the traditional hot shoe. This is Georgie Roeder's Harley Davidson. Well, Joey, uh, you're an expert now. Uh, you're out there racing with the big boys and you're beating them. Yeah, it's, it's a lot harder, you know, the farther you go, the harder it gets, you know, the better, you know, you always want to do better, and the better you want to do, like the national, we do pretty good around home here, but on the national level, we haven't had quite as much success as we've had at the local races, and that's what we're striving for now, is to do better at the nationals, and that's, you know, it just keeps getting tougher, you know. Well, I, I guess I'm going to have to make an assumption here, because I've seen you ride. It's evidently not the rider. Uh, is the equipment that much more sophisticated, or what is it? Well, it's a little bit of everything, you know. Equipment's better, and I think we got our bike running really good this year, and I think we'll be competitive. But it's, it's rider, you know, getting everything working, the motor and the chassis set up to work right, and then... And, and riding it, you got to ride it right. And then we're, I'm gaining experience, and Dad's gaining experience in how to build the motors, and I think we're going to be tough this year. How much of you think's luck? Oh, there's a lot of luck involved in racing, you know. You can eliminate luck by being prepared, you know, for it. But there's always that element where, you know, something could break. This little five-hour part could break, or you could slide down or anything, you know. There's always luck, and a little bit of luck involved, anyway. Well, I don't know. I've... Uh bummed around some racetracks most of my life and I've heard some of the top race car drivers in the world say they'd rather be lucky than good. Yeah, I take luck any day. <laughs> yeah. Here we are in the parking lot for the motorcycles. These are where the spectators ride in. Before the day's over, there will be thousands of motorcycles out here. This is number 94. This is Steve Champagne warming up his oil, getting ready to go out for hot laps. There's what they call the bullpen. This is where the guys sort of get together before they take to the track. Crowd starting to build. It's still early yet. Before the day's over, those stands will be packed. Here we have the Pro-Am class. They're getting ready to go off. That's 83F. That's Chris Moore on a Rotax. Guys are out checking out the track, making sure that uh, they know where the fast groove will be. If you look around that grandstand up here, you'll see people working stopwatches. They're devoted fans. They know what the score is. Most of these machines that are on the track right now are 600 cc machines. They're powered most of, most part by a machine that's built in Austria, the Rotax engine. It's a highly developed piece of racing equipment, and it really does a nice job. This session's over with for these guys on a practice laps, and pretty soon we'll have another one coming out. Pro-Am riders is a kind of a mixture of amateur and professional riders, the pros that are kind of backed down in their career somewhat. Uh, it's a case of the has-beens and the never-wases, and I tell you, it makes for a real neat session out there because the kids that are just coming up are really learning from the old-timers. Here we have the start of the Pro-Am final. It really turned out to be a terrific race. 
Rider 18L was John Lowe, and 7017B was Charles Buchanan, and 12X Robert Williams put on a terrific ride. He really went at it hammer and nail. As you can see, the action's tight. You watch that rider throw away a tear off it, so he's got good clear vision going into the next corner. As you can see, the track is molded groove. You can run just about anywhere you want to. Some of the riders are up on the rim. It's a dangerous place to be, but it's, these guys aren't a bit afraid of it. When you're up on that rim, a least little slip, boy, and I tell you, you're over the top of it. Fighting for control, boy, I'll tell you, they really dance coming off those corners. The 600cc twin develops about 50, 55 horsepower, and the machines weigh just a little over 200 pounds, so the power to weight ratio wise, very, very good. Makes for very competitive racing. Here they are coming out of the fourth corner onto the main straightaway. As you can see, John Lewis still is your leader. But he is being really pressed by 17B, Charles Buchanan, and 17X, Robert Williams. These three were riding on a string. These are some of the back markers coming up. But boy, I'll tell you, the racing was good even when you went back in the back. Down the back stretch and into the third turn. As you can see, they're using different grooves. Out on the front straight. Whoa, we have a man down and everybody clears him. Bit of a hairy moment there for the rider, but everybody cleared him. They're really heads up riding. That's a place you don't want to go down is when you're in front of the pack. So you can see the track is really getting loose now. There's a cushion building up. As the day wore on, the track got rougher and rougher. John Lowe's still leading going in toward the end of the Pro-Am final. Out on the front straightaway. The rest of the field strung out behind him, chasing him down towards the checkered flag. Here comes Buchanan up trying to make a pass. Now watch going into the third turn. Here goes low up on the high groove. Boy, it's going to be a big drag race coming out. Here they come. Nice shot going into the first turn. Some more action coming off the second turn up the back straightaway. Very close. Sound of those engines. Boy, that's music to this enthusiast ear. John Lowe really up on the rim. Not leaving any room at all for margin of error. He's really on a tight line. Woo. Got her a little crossed up there. back straight away and into the third turn side by side terrific race salute to the checkered flag pro-am racing it's the beginners that are really going to make the future riders of tomorrow and I'll tell you we have a very good crop of them coming up Taking a wind down lap, coming in, Charles Buchanan who finished in second place.
me a little bit about your racing program. Well, I'm from Holland, Michigan, and uh, I'm just getting started in this uh, pro-am, and uh, I like it. Are you, are you racing on the ice, the outdoor? Yes. Yeah. Uh, what, what kind of accomplishments you have on the outdoor ice racing series? Well, I won the national champion and championship in 1990. Okay, well, you've done a great job today. Here we go with the junior final. Twelve of the fastest machines out of the junior class go diving into the first turn, and I'll tell you, it sounded like pool balls on a break with all that rattling around up the back straightaway. We're really trying to sort out who's going to get into the first place. 85K, this is Brent Beyer. And boy, he's really followed very closely by the two hearts, number 16P Jim Hart, number 55P Roy Hart. Developed into a three-man battle, but I'll tell you, number 78X Roy Mayshew came right up in there with him. Mayshew was a top rider years ago, suffered an injury in a trail riding accident, got out of the game for a while, and started resuming his career in professional racing, and he's really going strong. Rodney Mayshew, number 78X. Rodney's followed very close by rider number 69F. This is Jess Yote Roeder. Rapid Rod, Rodney Mayhew. Right in behind Jess was 96B Eric John Cox. Junior class riders run a little bit quicker than the Pro-Ams, even though they're on the same size machines. Brett Byer is riding a Harley-Davidson 600, while Jim Hart and Roy Hart are both on Woods Rotax machines. May she was on a Harley-Davidson 600, so you got two Harleys and two Woods Rotaxes in the first four. The oddball in that group is just Rotor who's riding an XR 750 Harley Davidson that's got restrictors in it to reduce the horsepower to make it more competitive with the 600s. Three man battle here. It's Jim Hart streaking by number 16P. Like Hart was going to reel it in, and we have a rider down. Boy, the pack misses him. Her wheel just slid out, and he laid her over gently. But that dropped him out of competition for the day. So you can see Hart's way out in front, but I'll tell you, buyer starts reeling him in. that tire notching comes in handy trying to get that extra adhesion coming off the corners. They don't call them dirt squirters for nothing. If you want, look at that rear wheel, well you'll see a heck of a rooster tail coming off of it. She's throwing dirt all the way around. Engine turning pretty close to 8,000 RPM. It's screaming. Side by side, ooh, closing the door. Getting close to that guardrail. It's Jim Hart, Brett Byer. Now they're really doing it out. Byer taking the lead. Jim Hart's not done yet. Look at him coming in there. There we are, a two machine drag down to the finish line with Brett Byer taking the win. Jim Hart finished second. Roy Hart was third. What in the world did you pull off up there in the number three corner? Well, the whole race, I just sat back behind him and kind of watched his lines. A lot of rows behind him. I mean, you know, it didn't look like any big, uh, you know, big, big deal here. Yeah, well, I just sat back there. I knew I only had five or six pair offs, and I said, okay, three laps to go, and I'll make a run at him. Went up in the cushion and ran right around the top of him. 
Good job for them. Big round of applause for all three of these great junior riders. While the experts get ready, let's talk to Darren Erickson. We're in the pits here with national number 68, Darren Erickson. Darren, you're riding a Harley. How long have you been on this bike? Uh, I've been riding a Harley Davidson for about uh, 10 years now. They're, they're pretty reliable and I like the way they handle. Who does your wrenching for you? Uh, Carl Patrick builds the engines and my dad does the wrenching at the racetrack. Uh, how old are you? Let's get, uh, let's get started from the beginning here. Uh, I'm 30 years old. I've been at this game since I was 12. What kind of a bike did you ride then? Uh, I rode an XR75 Honda. And you turned uh, professional at what age? Uh, 16 years of age I turned uh, professional as a novice and then I moved up as a junior at 17 and 18 I was an expert. And you've ridden Harleys all your expert career then? Yeah I sure have. Harley's always been good to me and, and that's what we've been riding. Well, where's hometown for you Darren? Uh, Gahanna, Ohio right near Columbus. Do you campaign the national championship circuit very much? Uh, we ride all the East Coast stuff. We don't go out to California, but we ride everything else. Well, what's been some of your best finishes on the national circuit? Uh, we've been, we've been, uh, last uh, three or four years, we've been in the top ten in the region. Uh, the nationals, we've been making the nationals uh, middle pack. And the experts are getting ready. They're really hot. That's Brian Vellella, rider number 24, closest to you. There's Darren Erickson, rider number 68, alongside Tim Mertens, number 53. On the pole is 66, George Roeder, or Joey Roeder, as he's better known, with a hot lap at 26.603. And there they are, diving into the one-two turn. Boy, they're on it. Look at that action, boy. They're really racing going up that back stretch. Really close. Coming out on the front straightaway at the end of the first lap. Who is it? It's Darren Erickson taking the early lead. Rider number 68 diving into that first corner. He's got Joey Roeder right behind him. Steve Moorhead, Tim Mertens, Brian Villello all trying for that first place. Run up that back straight away. Merton's after Rooter. Here they come out on the front stretch. And Erickson's still leading. Erickson's got her crossed up and they're pretty hard. He's got, oh, he's off the bike. He's off the bike. It's a bad crash. He's stunned, but it looks like he's getting up. Lost control of it up on that cushion. Here they come down. Next lap, taking the red flag, stopping the race. They're going to stop the race. Here's a little bit of a s slow motion, as you can see. Erickson has it sideways, and here's where the experience pays off. Watch him as he unloads. Gets his feet down, gets down on the ground. The bike's in the air, but he's staying down. The experienced rider knows how to take those spills, and he's keeping himself low on the ground. He doesn't want to start tumbling. The speed he was traveling was at about 75 to 80 mile an hour when he got off that machine. Hooked a rut. As you can see, Joey Roeder just coming by underneath. Emergency crew going out to check out the situation, make sure there is no need for medical assistance. The bike was totally destroyed. Oh, there's our friend Steve Moorhead stopping by to check out Darren Erickson. Going to give him a lift back to the pit area. That'll take two wheelbarrows to carry that Harley back. It was broken in two. About a $12,000 piece of equipment completely destroyed. But machines can be replaced. Darren was sore a couple spots, but no broken bones. Here the field comes back around, get ready for the restart. Joey Roeder starting on the pole, seeing how Erickson crashed. There's Tim Merton starting in second place. It's a complete restart here. 
Steve Moorhead, 42, will be in third. Checking out on Brian Vellella. See where he's at. Number 47 was David Rayburn. But Vellella is the uh, one that Moorhead worries about the most. He's pretty tricky. Bad start for a rotor. Moorhead diving into the corner. Coming out on the back straightaway, looks like Moorhead's taking the lead. Got Mertens right behind him. Mertens diving low. Here comes Rotor underneath of him. Moorhead up high on the cushion, diving it off, coming back down low. Expert. A classy feel. Up the back straightaway. corner. Look at them, put them in there sideways. Burton's still leading. Stevie Moorhead running second, Joey Rota running third. Things are going to change around here in a little bit though, you can see that coming. Joey Rota hunting for the fast groove, going up the back straightaway. The bravest of brave will ride up on the rim. The rest of them stay low. Halfway mark, cross flags. Expert racing at Clark County Fairgrounds in Springfield, Ohio. It's always an exciting afternoon. Notice the way they go into that third and fourth corner high and then turn it around up in the middle and come diving down on the bottom. Here comes Joey Roeder. Moorhead moving up into second place. Burton's running third. Close action on the back stretch. Riders keeping her low down on that inside groove. Harley Davidson mounted Joey Roeder still out in front, but Steve Moorhead right behind him. Track is really getting rough. A lot of loose dirt laying up there, and they're really bouncing them around. You can see the guys peeling off those tear off gold. front straight away finishing up another lap today's event was sanctioned by the American Motorcycle Association who has events all over the United States but the events in Ohio are really terrific and they have a tremendous following thousands and thousands of race fans follow these guys week to week it's an exciting Sunday afternoon and there's a checkered flag for Joey Roeder. Moorhead finishing second. He's going to take the victory lap. Finishing third was Tim Burton. Fourth was Brian Valala. This year, the event will be held on May 23rd at Springfield. We hope to see you there. And this year's event will have a new class, an 883 cubic centimeter machine. It's going to be terrific. Right. Yeah, I always had good time, good sense. 
The Springfield Half Mile Race is a long-standing tradition being the first pro half mile race each spring. It's always a great social gathering as well as an exciting race. Well, that's all we have time for this month. Remember, there will be a new show next month. In the meantime, don't miss out. Join the over 8 million riders who enjoy the world of motorcycling. See you next time.